talking about TV ads. Hi, honey, I'm hi, honey, I'm hi, honey, I'm hi. Delicious. Good evening. My name is Victor. I am a TV critic and I live in your television set. Pocket coffee. Pocket coffee. An idea so truly dire that the product lasted in the shops for only two weeks. Why did it fail? It's strong. How long have you got? It's great. Pocket coffee had all the allure. I really enjoyed that. Of a chocolate liqueur, only without the booze. It tasted like diarrhea water and was taken off the shelves in espresso time. That is, once customers realized that as soon as they put it in their pocket, the coffee would leak out through the chocolate, leaving unsightly brown stains about the crotch. Well, that was my excuse. The Ronco Shocker. New from Ronco. Add a sparkle to your life. Break the ice at parties. Shock your neighbours and friends. Fun for all the family. The Ronco Electric Shocker. Only £3.99. The second most effective way of causing massive heart failure. And now, it's the most effective way of causing massive heart failure. Aha, uh -huh, fried sandwiches. Made with Kraft Dairy League. Spread two pieces of bread with dairy leaves. Sprinkle one of them with finely chopped fried bacon. Mmm. And we're ready to... Have a heart attack. And why not? All the ingredients for a major coronary are here. Fat, lard, more fat, bread, fat, and more lard. Now let's fry. Fry in the hot bacon fat until it's crisp and golden brown both sides. Calvary and savage beatings. La, 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 la. When I was a boy, we had respect for our teachers, true. There was buggery and savage beatings, but it wasn't all fun. There was natural history to learn. Make tracks. Make tracks. Make tracks with Wayfinders, the adventure shoe that's perfect for school. And it's got a secret compass in the heel. Wayfinders, the only shoe with animal track soles. So realistic, it looked like ten tiny one-legged animals had escaped from Lilliput Zoo. As Andrex found to their cost, there are certain words that refuse to enter the English language, no matter how much airtime they're given. Stroft was one. Strong and soft. Make stroft. Only Andrex is stroft. And I suspect that the advertising executive who thought of it was stroft in the head. And here's another. Food. Food. A cross between frozen and food. Food consisted of a range of boil-in-the-bag produce, which tasted like shite. In fact... There's only ever been one worthwhile use for a boil-in-the-bag frozen dinner, and that is to get rid of annoying waiters in restaurants who keep trying to make you order more food. You want more side dish? No, thank you. Extra bhaji? No. Dal? No. Pickle? No. Raita? No. Papatam? No. Simply attach a thawed boil-in-the-bag casserole, open your jacket and say, Thank you, but I seem to be quite full. Need I say more? Food. Went the way of... Cadam. So called, presumably, because it rhymed with madam. Either that or the copywriter was dyslexic because it very soon became came. Cadam just didn't catch on, you see, because it sounds like the highly dangerous element cadmium. And heavy metal and facial beauty have never really gone together. See what I mean? We only have one skin. Yeah, and have you seen her one skin recently? We only have one skin. We boys have got four skins. And to think I once wanted to get her in the back of my Ford Anglia and make the windows steam up and wear out the rear suspension while I pleasured her with my ample legs. Nowadays, I'd rather pleasure Anne Whittakam in my Ford Anglia. Hi, Anne. Hello, big boy. Jump in and let's make our own yoghurt. Teeth in or teeth out? Teeth out, but be gentle with me. I've not yet been rendered. Oh, it's going all wobbly. Oh, wobbly. Oh, not in the face. Not the prostate. Ooh. Not with a hat pin. Ooh. Switch on the headlights, please. I can't see a blimmin' thing. Ah, the Ford Anglia. No expense was spared in this ad. The best score that money could buy, great lighting, great photography. But there was one thing the Ford Corporation couldn't legislate for, and that was the local garage hijacking their ad in the local cinema. Impress your lady wife with a brand new car of your dreams from Reed Motors, Vicarage Road, Sidmouth. This week's special offer, buy an Anglia and win a case of chum dog food. Sadly, the Ford Anglia is gone. <laughs>
Has your dog the look alive look? But chum is still available. However, it no longer contains vitalized gravy. Vitalized gravy. My auntie Rona used to add something that looked very much like vitalized gravy to all our food, and this was in fact what most restaurants served up to their clientele in the 1950s. And why not? Most women in the 1950s looked like dogs anyway. They were covered in fur and their breath stank. It wasn't about indifference. Harry, Harry, come to my 1960s cocktail party. Harry. Here's a tip that's always useful if you're holding a cocktail party, especially if there's a Ford Anglia in the room. Instead of offering guests empty dishes like this, fill them with lots of unsalted peanuts. And when one of your guests remarks, you don't see unsalted peanuts around much these days, reply, actually, you're doing me a favour eating those. You see, the dog ate me false teeth, so I can only suck the chocolate off these days. Heinz cream of tomato soup. And here's your Heinz hint. Try poaching eggs in it. Hmm, good and mm, tasty. Just break them into the hot soup and poach till set. What a great idea. Salmonella of raw eggs cracked into the great taste of lukewarm orange citric acid and whey protein. Mmm, what a blend of flavours. Hmm, adds Infinitum's very own Professor Kurt Flith tried this recipe out under laboratory conditions. And it came out just fine. Heinz baked beans. Could we have another delicious Heinz cuisine hint, please? And here's a Heinz hint. Try sprinkling them with grated cheese and browning under the grill. Wretch! Ooh, wonderful. Oh well, it's not nice, but it, it won't kill you. In fact, it's good and mm, tasty and mm, filling and mm, healthy and mm, full of ns. Mm. So is alphabetic spaghetti, by the way. It's full of ns mm, and and w's and f's and dear me. Whip pan, quickly, quick, quickly, I said whip pan, whip pan, whip pan! We eat healthily at home. I, I come from a family of long livers. My, my great-grandfather had a liver four foot long. Want to see it? Look. Ooh, I could, I could eat it up. I love offal. In fact, I have so much iron in my blood, I set off the metal detectors at airports. I do. Hello, faggot lovers everywhere. He's bold. I have a message for you from Birdseye. Birdseye faggots will appeal to your whole family. My great-grandfather didn't like faggots. Birdseye even suggests that people who don't like faggots could enjoy these. Oh, dear. I'd like to introduce you to a new kind of hostess. The Echo Hostess. Freeze frame. Back in the 1970s, the word hostess didn't have the salacious overtones that it does now. That was long before the world knew anything about madams accepting lunch and vouchers for arranging sex orgies, then pretending that men were simply coming in for a meal. I'm always having people in for a meal. Whoa, eh? Whoa, eh? But they often turn up late. So when I've cooked the food, I just pop it into here. And it keeps everything hot and succulent for hours. Oh, first-class idea. That gives the food enough time to dry out while the E. coli germs are multiplying. Lunch at Katie's, dinner in hospital. Are they capers, or do you have a rabbit in the kitchen? There's the roast. And the vegetables. Ralph! I don't know how I ever managed without one. Look at the silly cow. Wonder if she's been on the sherry. Talking of which, he may be a legendary cinematic figure nowadays, but Orson Welles spent most of the 1960s flogging any old garbage. The summer temperature here at the Domecq Vineyards can reach 100 degrees. Including sherry like this that tastes like it had been fermented in a disused Spanish swimming pool. Nature's very wonderful. A genius but a lying bastard. But Orson was an irascible man, and he ended up giving advertising men short shrift, as the following never-before-showed exclusive footage proves in... The campaign they really wish they'd never done of the week. We know a remote farm in Lincolnshire where Mrs. Buckley lives. Every July, peas grow there. This is a lot of shit, you know that. Orson, you did six last year, and by far and away the best, and I know the, the reason. The right reading for this is the one I'm giving it. I spent 20 times more for you people than any other commercial I've ever made. You are such pests. Now, what is it you want? No, I think in your depths of your ignorance. What is it you want? Whatever it is you want, I can't deliver because I just don't see it. Sadly, not all voiceover sessions are as successful as my famous ad for Iraq dates. When you feel like something sweet, make it a date. Iraq dates without stones. As opposed to married Iraqi women who go on dates, then get stoned in every sense. A propos of nothing. Do you think Chinese blind people use white chopsticks lets? Ask a non-English speaking Cantonese woman. Oh, 
How inscrutable. Oh dear, Mr. Wells' session just is not going very well. Do you emphasize a bit in? In July. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Sorry. Um, There's no known way of saying an English sentence in which you begin a sentence with in and emphasize it. Get me a jury and show me how you can say in July and I'll go down on you. That's just idiotic if you'll forgive me by saying so. That's just stupid. In July. I'd love to know how you emphasize in and in July. Impossible. Meaningless. I think all they were thinking about was that they didn't want to... He isn't thinking. Uh, prepare the next advertisement for our viewers, please, Telecine. Please, sound effect of telephone ringing. Pretends to pick up the phone. In hello? Yes? What do you mean you've had a diarrhoea blowback? Sorry, viewers, it's the Archbishop of Canterbury. Could you tune round somewhere else for a bit, please? 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 What is, what is she going on about? Of course, the best British cuisine comes from everywhere except Britain, especially from India. India, land of fascination, with a tempting and distinctive cuisine. For authentic Indian dishes, visit this restaurant. The atmosphere of India and Indian courtesy will add to your enjoyment. But a word of warning, if you're in Bournemouth or anywhere else and you visit an Indian restaurant, here's a tip. Don't eat the mints on the counter before departure. Don't. Why not? Because gentlemen drink 50 pints of lager. Oh, another pint of lager, Gunga Ding. And they go and strain the potatoes. They touch the winkles. And then they do not wash their hands. Yeah, fuck it. They then walk up to the counter to pay, but before they leave, fuck they off. rummage about uh. in the mint bowl and leave germs everywhere. So fuck remember, it. watch out for the mint when you leave an Indian restaurant. Oh, Otherwise, I'll you could end up in a corma for a oh, week. Gunga Din, I'll have a pint of fucking Gunga Din cider before I go. Gunga Din cider. Actually, you can't buy Gunga Din cider anymore. I miss it. Me and my mate Joe Churchill, we used to go to this Chinese bint's house for dinner, and after one glass, we'd be totally bonged. <laughs> So that's what she was saying. Oh dear, she's off again, silly cow. Katie, after all that wonderful cuisine, would you care for a postprandial smoke? Remember this startling headline that flashed across the front pages a few weeks ago? Smoking habits shorten life. Or have you pushed it to the back of your mind? trying to forget it. Forgetting won't change a thing. The fact remains, some smoking habits do shorten life, but not the pipe smoking habit. Doctors have proved that pipe smokers live longer because pipe smoking is not harmful. <laughs> For our feature presentation, a collection of bygone cinema ads that have never been shown before on British television. Unless, of course, this is a repeat broadcast, in which case I'm lying. No matter. For centuries, Britain has produced the world's worst cuisine. Yes, it has. No, don't argue. Don't argue. I mean, if British food was any good, then Bombay and Beijing would be full of English takeaways. Coming soon to this cinema, Dora Bryan and Sir Gerald Nabarro as the gay couple who take crack cocaine up their bum bar. In fact, the only time anybody actually enjoys British food is at the movies. Having full penetrative sex with an ironing board. And it's simply because it's so dark that we can't see what we're eating, which is why we leave the cinema looking like this. <laughs> Visual gags. Don't you love them? Now is the time. Time by three. Cinemas have traditionally flogged strange and exotic types of confectionery that were never on sale anywhere else, like this. New ice cream. Fruit parfait. Cool, exciting, sophisticated. <laughs> sophisticated? It was frozen margarine with a cherry stuck on the top. Cool, exciting, sophisticated, special. That's right, special fruit name. parfait. It failed, of course, because the British wouldn't say foreign words like parfait in public. It was just the same with quenelle. Fucking hell. Cinema is all about fantasy. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Oh, Quinnell! Well, that's okay then. As I was saying, cinema is all about fantasy, and the biggest fantasy they expected you to fall for was the ridiculous idea that women like this would be working in your local flea pit. In fact, the only thing more revolting than the frozen margarine on sale on the tray was the miserable old cows and unshaven gentlemen who sold it. Of course, this was the 1960s, the height of the space race, and Britain was at the cutting edge of technology. 
The Russians had Soyuz, the Americans had Apollo, and the British had... Stand by for launching. It's Zoom with three new flavors. Never mind about rockets burning up on re-entry. This one melted before you even got it back to your seat. The Zoom came in three flavors. Red flavor, blue flavor, and yellow flavor. Or only one flavor if you were colorblind. Like all rockets, its shape was profoundly phallic. But that's hardly surprising after all. Can you imagine the aerodynamic problems involved in getting a vagina into geostationary orbit? So there were also more discreet versions for girls to pop in their mouths. And the first ice lolly specially for girls. As recommended by Lady Penelope. This was fab, the first ice lolly for girls. Why was it for girls? Because it had hundreds and thousands on it, that's why. Unlike the first chocolate bar for girls, which was the Mars bar, as recommended by... Marion Faithful, who found it truly filling and satisfying. Tray on head, out tray, on her head, out, on the head, out tray, on head. Pray for me. Have a hot dog. What? A piping hot frankfurter tucked in a fresh white roll. Mmm, they're great. Mmm, they're mechanically recovered BSE carcass meat. From Mars to sausages in one move. I hope you're enjoying my excellent links. No, not that sort of excellent links. Where were we? Oh yeah. Hmm. Why not try an exciting dab bun with a hot pink streak of skin and gristle? Hmm. And coat it with a great taste of red flavor squirted all over it. Watch a film, then buy an SRB with your friends and chew the fat together. And the bits of extruded brain and sinew. As for BSB, sorry, SRBs, the tastiest and most nutritious part was the box. And talking of boxes. Even in the 1930s, people were getting a thrill out of a box of chocolates. But by the 1960s, some people had discovered another method of getting a thrill. Gentlemen sitting on their own would they'd place the box over their laps and, and through the hole in the bottom of the box. They'd, they'd, they'd toss themselves off. Oh, that's disgraceful. I'm sorry about that. Oh, dear. So disgraceful. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. You see, I ended the sentence with a preposition. It should be tossing off themselves. Anyway, they did that. They put the thing through the box. A story that makes this trailer more poignant than was ever intended. Had a toss. Feeling thirsty. Enjoy a drink with your friends in the Odeon bar. As a child, you longed to be old enough to buy alcoholic drinks. But when you finally could, you discovered that the ones they sold in cinemas were even more disgusting than the non-alcoholic ones. This was not a drink so much as a device for getting women to assume a Y shape after the film. But frankly, you'd need a damn sight more than a baby sham to see the world like this. What you'd need would be a can of... Chesswood mushrooms. Ah, I think mushroom pie should do very nicely. Chesswood mushrooms. They did button and magic mushrooms. Pass some along, please. That's the way. Pass it along and help others to enjoy. This excellent idea somehow never caught on in our nation's cinemas. Why not? Because back in the 1960s, everyone still remembered rationing and the need to eat whenever you could. So, frankly, passing free food along in the dark, even if it were an SRB, it was too much of a temptation for anyone. And talking of temptation, the campaign they wish they'd never done of the week. When your husband's away, it's such a comfort to have the dog around to take care of you. I'm <laughs> passing no comment. Ooh, I <laughs> got any magazines. Where was I? I need a drink. Feel like a vodka? Zamoyski. Never heard of it. It was discontinued. You could always tell a Zamoyski drinker he was the one shouting to himself on a disused bomb site while poor children threw bricks at his shack. Shut up, you little cow sons! Yeah, little kids! And Zamoyski didn't need to be any colour because all that Zamoyski drinkers wanted was the great flavour of getting alcohol into their veins real quick. Goodbye, everybody. Safe journey home. Smashed on 60 again. Baby Sham and 10 quarts of Zamoyski from the Odeon Bar. Time to jump into that escort and learn something about nature that your biology teacher never taught you. That pillar boxes do nothing for ages, then suddenly leap out you in the dark when you've been drinking. I don't want to take the chance of being better again. <laughs> I'm sorry, but with a voice like this, she deserves to die. <laughs> What I'd like to know is, what does she do with all the money? What oh. money? The money her mother gave her for the singing lessons. Still, at least the caring, sharing NHS connected her up to a Zamoyski drip, straight to the arm in the hospital. Where, if you live, you'll want to die, because...
back in the 1960s, inner city estates were generally thought of as dull old places. Not much for bored housewives to do all day except put a packet of Omo in their front window to announce in acronymical terms that their old man was out and they were therefore available for a full servicing from any passing tradesman. But this perception is wrong, because if we're to believe the ads from this period, scarcely a day went by without some figure from classical antiquity appearing on the estate, such as Ajax. Here they come. Second only to Achilles among the Greek heroes. It's the Ajax Power Men. Get Ajax liquid, it cleans like a white tornado. Cleans like a white tornado, does it? Well, I've seen how a white tornado cleans. Yes, it cleans the house. Clean, clean away. It cleans like a white tornado. If the demigod Ajax could arrive in a puff of magic smoke... Why did he have to leave in a cheap old Ford car? Look at it. You'd never get the Batmobile backfiring, would you? But it wasn't just ancient Greeks who dispelled the monotony of life on a Sixties estate. Dear me, no. When the Vikings were here during the Dark Ages, they raped, looted and pillaged. But this time... How can you win a five-pound grocery voucher? Look in later tonight and see. Hello there. I'm the Danish Bacon Viking, one of the whole crew who've been out knocking on doors and giving away these five-pound grocery vouchers. They contented themselves with handing out a few rashes of streaky and five pounds in grocery vouchers. Remember, this was in the days when five pounds of grocery vouchers could buy, well, could buy five pounds of groceries. Mrs. Maxted, who I met on my second visit to Stoke-on-Trent, Yes, I come from Trent Vale. And were you pleased to see a Danish bacon viking on your doorstep? Yes, I had my receipt coupon waiting for you. You did indeed. And now you've got a five-pound grocery voucher. But I never thought you would call on me. Aha, that's part of the fun, Mrs. Max did. What would you do if this man appeared on your doorstep? I'd say that when you were at RADA, you probably thought you'd be playing King Lear at this stage in your career, didn't you? Sorry, you just never get a knighthood at this rate. Unlike this man, the Daz White Knight. The Daz White Knights are coming your way with big cash prizes. Whose majestic medieval steed... We're hurrying on our way with purses full of prize money. Unfortunately transmogrified... Into another lousy British car. A bus stop could be at your house. Unlike King Arthur's knights, who crossed the Holy Land searching for the Holy Grail, this knight's quest was more modest, giving five quid to any bint who could hold up a packet of dads without dropping it. As with Ajax, there was always something rather pathetic about his departure. Eastbourne, Chichester. What's that noise? It, it reminds me of the good old days. No, not those good old days. I'm talking about the good old days when ice cream vans used to come around. Talking of which... The Rainbow Men are coming. Yes, it's the Rainbow Men in their revamped Mr. Whippy ice cream vans. A brilliant concept, but years ahead of their time, on account of colour telly hadn't been introduced, so the Rainbow Men were really the monochrome men. If a Rainbow Man calls on you, show him one or more of these brands. Homo? No, it's the way I walk. Yes, back in the 60s, your common or garden in a city estate was not unlike a Parisian pavement cafe. Wait there long enough and the whole world would pass by. I wonder who'll pop up next. I'm the rainwater man. It's not you yet. Oh. Oh, dear, dear, dear. The whole outfit screams pervert, doesn't it? Hastily thrown together in an Oxfam shop, I'd say, and all it needs now is for the hubby to come home unexpectedly early from work and there'll be some explaining to do, I don't mind telling you. They really understand gentleness. Look at the nose. He's a drinker. God created alcohol, I reckon, so that ugly people could have sex too, then cirrhosis. I bet he wears plastic shoes for sex kicks as well. Plaster shoes. Ideal sandals for the seaside, town or country. Plaster shoes. Washable, colourful, inexpensive. Style for all the family. Ask for plaster shoes by name at most shoe shops. Where was I? Oh, yes, I remember it. I was a 1930s crooner broadcasting to the workers of a cake factory over there, Tanoi, about my talking animal. Mark, Mark, what creature cries Mark, Mark? I'll give you a tip. The dog with a hair lip. Boo 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 doo. I'm losing track. Oh, yes. The Golden Wonder Chris Men have come to town. This lot were resting actors, wearing tam shanters be delighted when they call, like these lucky ladies. And holding long, thin-veined, wrinkly things in their hands. It's ready when we called, so five pounds for... Pound notes, I mean. What did you think I meant? The Golden Wonder Chris Men are still down your way with crisp notes for you. 
As I said, all sorts of men would call at your door in those days. I, I even remember the polio man who used to call at our house every Wednesday. We paid him every week for years. We didn't get polio. I mean, how unlucky can you get? Powerful, though all these Greek gods and superheroes were, they never visited the really tough estates, and I know why. Because while they were on the doorstep handing out magnificent prizes... Oh, you won a hundred pounds! There you are, that's all yours! Urchins and street ruffians who cared nothing for the splendour of classical antiquity would be nicking the wheels of their getaway car. There's always a few clowns who spoil it for everyone else. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nestle's bandwagon is coming to town. Typical. Listen to that. How dare they tell us to say Nestle nowadays when for years they told us it was Nestle's. The Nestle's Harlequin and Clown may call at your door, play the easy Nestle's party game and win a... Anyway, I don't want to be reminded of fun fairs. No, thank you. Why not? Because... I once heard about a very nasty thing that happened at a fun fair. It was on the Sky Bomber. And to tell you about it, I'll have to go all wobbly. Wobbly, 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 wobbly. Long ago, a friend of mine boarded a Sky Bomber, a contraption shaped like a giant cotton bud with a cage at either end. He found himself sharing his cage with an idiot who just won a coconut and... As the bomber began turning on its axis and G-Force kicked in, the man lost his grip, let go of his prize. Have you any idea how much damage a loose coconut can inflict during a three-minute ride in a combined space at G-Force 12? Funny thing was, the coconut man turned out to be a brittle bone victim and... Put it this way, they didn't so much bury the body, they just vacuumed him away. This is a simulation, of course. We got this bloke called Federico Fellini to direct this sequence because the BBC budgets are so huge. Did the rainwater man end up in the nick? We'll never know. But manufacturers must have decided that potential rapists weren't the ideal representatives for their products. So they opted instead for chaps with chests. Girlies! Hello, I'm Katie, and I'm here to tell you that next week, Oxo could win you up to £15 in cash. Just watch. Oxo's Katie girls are coming your way. Yes, when the first stirrings of feminism reached these shores, Katie assembled a crack team, trained them with military precision, and sent them out to manoeuvres to thicken the nation's juices. Show them a packet of Oxo, answer a simple question correctly. But sadly, Katie turned out to be not so much a Lord Kitchener of the stock cubes as a Lord Haw Haw, because a few years later, having been spurned by Oxo. Oh. With Bovril stock granules, you can add just the right amount of stock to bring out the natural flavours in your cooking. I should know. I have made the odd pint or two of stock. The turncoat took the Bovril shilling. Disgusting! Call the police! It's Captain Invisible Bruising! Hello, X-Ray 4. Darling, what do you want for Christmas? Well, blow me! Philip's finishing! Ours was to be a G-Plan home. In fact, I'd love to show it to you. G-Plan's ads were voiced over by a woman who made the Queen sound like a slut. It was the IKEA of its day, bought by nice couples. An extra cosy in winter when friends come in to see our television. That's David's special chair. The hubbies, middle-class men who always preferred broadsheets to tabloids so they could hide behind them and get away from their shrewish, nagging wife. I don't wish to cause unrest, but I suspect... And now here's our bed. This G-plan bed didn't see a lot of G-spot activity, I reckon. Isn't this dressing table lovely? Where are they now? She took to drinking in the mornings, he took to drinking in the afternoons, the once fashionable G-plan chair is now covered in piss and resides in a twilight home, and the once fashionable husband and wife are also covered in piss and residing in a twilight home. Oh well, all things must pass, all flesh is grass, all human life is there, and all TV programmes must end sometimes in midst... Another swell TV show from Associated Radio Fusion.